1964, a young Hafiz Asad used his military position to quickly overthrow the government and cleared all opposing parties. Asad loyalists were installed in every key post, with Hafiz Asad in the seat of president. State-sponsored propaganda depicted Assad as a wise, just, and strong leader of Syria and of the Arab world in general. Sham elections were held that guaranteed Hafiz Assad landslide victories. The police state operated by Hafiz Assad was brutally repressive. His regime provided no freedoms of speech or expression and established a state of emergency that allowed for the arbitrary detention and persecution of citizens without trial. In February 1982, the Hama massacre brought worldwide attention to Assad's tyranny. Human rights organizations estimate that between 20,000 and 40,000 people were killed in Hama by Assad's military in order to quell a popular revolt against the oppressive regime. Following his death in June 2000, Hafiz Assad's son, Bashar Assad, was swiftly confirmed as president by an unopposed referendum. Despite introducing limited economic, educational, and political reforms, Bashar Assad's rule was no less corrupt or repressive than his father's. Such groups as Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International have detailed how Bashar's regime and secret police routinely torture, imprison, and kill political opponents or even citizens who speak out against the regime. The Syrian people quietly persevered under the oppression of the Assad regime for over four decades. But 2011 would be different. In the small town of Dara, the largest protest to take place in decades would follow. Peaceful demonstrators called for freedom and an end to corruption, but were met with the deadly force of Bashar Assad's security police. The Dara protests began to grow exponentially, falling into a tragic pattern with funerals turned protests leading to more deaths at the hands of security forces. Calls for freedom and an end to the regime quickly spread across the entire country, and the response by the regime was no less ruthless. We do have armed terrorist groups that are resisting the uh, Syrian forces uh, who are these armed uh, and terrorist committing groups? crimes against civilians. Who are these armed terrorist groups and why is it after so many years in power they've all of a sudden sprung up out of the blue? I mean all of this began in Dara when some children were arrested and being held and peaceful protesters came out after mosque one day calling for, uh, asking for the children to be released and they were fired upon. Some of them were shot dead. They weren't even calling for the government to be overthrown. They were calling for basic, for the kids to be released and then basic reforms. Uh, and, and now, because of the repression, because of the response by your government, uh, it has escalated. According to human rights groups, Syrian authorities have already killed thousands of people and thousands more have gone missing. Hamza al khatib was only 13 when he was arrested by members of the Syrian regime. His bruised corpse was returned to his family one month later. His body was covered in cigarette burns and his genitals had been mutilated. Numerous Syrian children, ages 12 to 17, remain in detention and are at risk of facing similar fates. Oh, my God.
على المقدم حسين هرموز من ملاك الفرقة إتعاش وعلي وانشقاطي عن الجيش وانجمان إلى صبوب شباب سوريا مع عدد من عناصر الجيش العربي السوري أنا الملازم أول عبد الرزاق محمد طلاس من الفرقة الخامسة غرباء وارتضينا شعارا في الحياة إن تسل عنا فإنا لا نبالي بالطغاة نحن جند الله دوما دربنا درب الأباء لا نبالي بالقيود بل سنمضي of the century. Nearly 100,000 people have been killed, countless injured. Uh, we have been very clear to the Assad regime 
but also to other players on the ground that a red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. Uh, that would change my calculus. That would change my equation. صباح الأربعاء الحادي والعشرين من أغسطس آب عام 2013 استيقظ من بقي من الأحياء في غوطتي دمشق الشرقية والغربية على مئات الضحايا بلا دماء ولا أشلاء بدوا وكأنهم نيام من يعيدهم لي يصرخ الأب لكن الأطفال يغطون في موت عميق حالهم كحال هؤلاء كثير منهم ماتوا على أسرتهم كثير منهم ماتوا وهم في طريقهم طلبا للنجدة من شيء لم يألفوه من قبل مثل هذا الطفل وأمه فقد كان الموت أسرع إليهما حتى قبل أن يخرجا من منزلهما The Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant, otherwise known as ISIS, has threatened to leave the city of Aleppo to the Assad regime unless rival rebel groups stop their attacks against the Al-Qaeda-affiliated group within 24 hours. An alliance of rebel forces calling themselves the Army of Mujahideen have reportedly inflicted significant losses against ISIS in recent days as more moderate rebels try to retake the initiative from ISIS, which stands accused of imposing a reign of terror on territory it controls. Syria's main opposition movement, the Syrian National Council, yesterday endorsed their fellow rebels' fight against ISIS.
especially the little ones, left paralyzed or with nerve damage after being caught in the crossfire. Wow, bravo, 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 bravo. I ask myself, how come I didn't cry when I was there? And the reason, I knew the reason, because there's no time to cry there. One quarter of Lebanon's population are refugees from Syria. Most are women and children. Hala and her five siblings arrived here as orphans. Like many refugees in Lebanon, this tent has become their home. When I met Hala and her brothers and sisters, they had been living in this camp for almost a year. All right, your turn. Is it nice Hello. My involvement with Zaytuna is um, to share the somatic therapy, somatic therapy for kids. And um, one, one part of the project is help the teachers be able to, to facilitate the somatic therapy and somatic contact with children. As a part of this work, we, we got to, to be with the kids and do the work with the kids. So it's kind of a bridge between the teacher and, and, and the kids. Uh, Ali and I worked together in, uh, in disaster areas before, but we both have identical trainers, but the training's both in body work and in the trauma work. So uh, we came as a team, and I came to uh, support his particular therapeutic model with kids. Uh, my name is Rory O'Connor, and I'm the creator of a really simple storytelling game called Rory Story Cubes. It's my second time here at Zaytona working with the children. I'm here to tell stories and really inspire the children to become storytellers with their families and their friends. And it's really my hope is to leave them with a toy and an activity that can kind of keep them going during the, the dark times uh, while they're away from Syria.